Yo, what's going on? So today I'm going to teach you how to perfectly execute the basic punches of boxing, which is the one, two, three, and four, or in other words, the jab, crossed, left hook, and right hook. So starting off with the jab, um, if you're a beginner to boxing, this is going to be the first punch that you learn, and it is the most effective punch that you can learn because it sets up all your other shots. I'm going to show you to perfectly execute it. Right. So when you throw a jab, so if you have your guard up, yeah, not normal boxing guard up, when you throw a jab, you don't want to telegraph it at all. You can read a jab if you see like the shoulder pop or if you see it, someone bring it down a bit, you know they're going to throw it. Um, so do not telegraph any of your punches and that goes for the jab as well. So if you don't want to telegraph it, make sure you keep a high guard, right? And it's literally straight from here, boom, all right? So from here, and remember after every punch when you throw it, you got to bring it back ASAP, right? Because when your punch, when you throw a punch, your punch is going to be looking for that counter. If I throw that too slow, they're going to come for that counter over. So, when you throw a jab, make sure your shoulder is guarding your chin. So if they do try and counter you, at least you have some form of protection guarding you, right? So here, remember, don't telegraph it. So don't bring it down. You know what I mean? Don't shoulder pop before you throw it. Keep it guard up. Boom. Alright, as I said, always keep your shoulder protecting your chin, alright? Um, if you want to make your jab quicker, and this goes for every punch, you want to be relaxed, alright? So you want to be relaxed until the point of impact. So keep your guard loose, keep your hand loose, right? You see how my guard, you see how my fist isn't closed? It's, it's a kind of open, kind of closed, about midway, alright? And then when you throw it, it's loose, 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 loose. And then the point of impact, twist. All right, so I'm gonna show you again. So, loose, 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 point of impact, twist, and then close it, all right? So it should look. Like, so if we're talking about pivoting on the jab, there is no need to pivot because it's not, it's not a shot that comes from your hip. So basically, to get more power in the jab, you just wanna throw and you wanna step into the jab. So when you throw it, you step in. It's literally just stepping on the jab because you're putting your weight forward. So when you throw the jab, keep it over guard up at the same time. So perfect jab should look like this. All right. As for the cross, it's kind of the same thing. So. Boxers are normally bladed, right? So they have the bladed stance, but they're more sideways on. This is because if you're bladed, your body isn't for sure. I like to keep more of a square stance because I like to approach my opponent from below. And I used to like to use a lot of head movement. If you're bladed, it's kind of hard to do the same head movement. But a bladed stance, it stops your body from getting shot too much. So that's why when you see when Mayweather is in his guard, he's standing bladed so he doesn't get the body shots. He keeps his shoulder up like this, protecting his face, and he keeps his over guard like that, right? And he keeps his arm low, so it's almost impossible to body shot him. And he will always try and roll with your shots like that. That's why the shoulder is so effective, you can just roll with your shots. So if someone tries to hit you, just roll with it. Literally just roll with it. Alright? So, but with the cross, bladed stance, if you're in a bladed stance, um, just use whatever stance you like. But bladed stance is the best for the cross because you can get the most kind of uh, power out of it. All your power comes from your hip, right? If you're bladed, you've got all that kind of leverage from it like you're, you've got a lot of twist on the hips which is a lot of power coming from that so if you're in your stance right all remember always keep your guard up from this stance you don't want to load up yeah because that's going to telegraph it so you don't want to blah, boom boom that's going to telegraph it all right literally play this stance just as fast as you can so if i show you my hips Remember, whenever you do throw a punch, always keep the, the opposite guard up, and as soon as you throw that punch, bring it back, all right? Boom, bring it back, boom, bring it back. Before you throw this punch, always bring it back. So if you're throwing a jab, you bring it back first, and then I throw this one, all right? Because you never want to leave your guard open. You want to be as defensive as possible. So the left hook, which is number three. So as I said, jab is the number one. Cross is the number two. Left hook, 
number three, and then that's going to be number four. So we're on the left hook right now. A lot of modern day boxers, what they like to do with the lead hook or number three is they they don't pivot on their foot. This like it brings st stability, and you can use your core. A lot of professionals use it. So basically, what you want to do with the lead hook is the same. It's the same concept for everything. So when you're throwing it, don't try and telegraph it. So don't swing back. Don't bring your arm back all the way here and try to get as much power. You need to keep it tight, right? Because it's quite. If I'm swinging it here, it's going to be an obvious punch. You're going to get countered, or they're just going to move back or defend it or somehow. All right. So you want to keep it tight. <coughs> Okay. So with the lead hook, if you're slipping, you don't have to slip, but if you slip in, it puts leverage on that on that onto your leg and you can load it up with your hook. So that's how that's how Mike Tyson you saw he always keeps it tight. Okay, so he, he likes to put the leverage on. But if you're just throwing a normal left hook, it's the same. So watch. You see how my shoulder never leaves my chin. Right, it's tight. Don't telegraph it though, yeah? Remember. Tight, tight. And remember, keep it loose until the point of impact. So. Alright. So if we're talking about the hook and you want to bring in the leverage from the hook and you involve the hips into it, which is always important on the hook, you always want to put your hips into it. So, what you want to do, if you're throwing the lead hook, which is the left hand, what you want to do? You pivot on your front foot, right? So, and you can see in my hips that it thrashes my hip. So that's the number three. Number four is the right hook or the rear hook it's literally the same thing so keep your guard up and you're throwing that hook so keep it tight and if we're talking about pivoting on the rear hook or the right hook it's literally the same thing but you're pivoting on your back foot okay so so you keep your chin tucked in behind your shoulder, as you can see here. And when you when you hit someone with a punch, right, you want to follow through with it. You don't want to just stop here, right? You want to follow through with it, all right? The reason for that is because you don't want to punch at your target, you want to punch through your target. If I'm getting punched on the chin and he stops here, that's good because I'm not getting knocked out, right? Because my head isn't going to go all the way back. The, the reason you get knocked out is when your, your head moves so fast, that your brain knocks into your into your skull. If I'm pushing his head with my punch, that's gonna snap his head back a lot, and it's gonna obviously make their brain hit the skull quicker, which obviously which is a knockout punch. So always follow through with your punches. Same with a jab. Don't just throw it at him. Throw it through him, right? Throw it through him. Same with the straight. Don't throw it at him. Throw it through him. Okay. So that's the one, two, three, and four. That's the jab, cross, left hook, and right hook. I'm gonna show it from a different angle. So remember the jab, right? That's your jab, boom. All right, shoulder always guarding the chin. This is your hook. Guard is up, shoulder guarding my other chin, as you can see, yeah? Boom, show it from this angle, okay? This is your hook, shoulder guarding chin, guard up. All right, and this is your other hook. Shoulder guard in the chin, and guard up. Remember when you throw it, keep loose, loose. Loose to the point of impact. So just remember with boxing, in most cases, the basics that wins the fight. All right, if you can master the basics, then you're gonna master boxing. It's literally just mastering the defense and offense. So when you throw, you're mastering the defense with the offense, all right? It's just mastering these little movements that are going to get you far ahead in boxing. This is from beginner, amateur and professional as well. So remember just always, always perfecting the techniques 
on the simple punches. It's I know the flashy punches look cool, but I mean what gets you far ahead is the basics in boxing, alright? So remember, practice the basics, perfect them, master them, and you'll be master of boxing. So thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our content, then like, subscribe, share, turn on post notifications. And yeah, we'll see you next time, man. Peace.